Andrea Jing. I'm the creator of Cooking for Life, an online cooking course that enables busy people to fit cooking into their lives. Today's Wednesday, so it's time for Cookbook Thoughts, where I share my thoughts on a cookbook with you. This week, it is Itsu. For those of you watching this video outside of the UK, Itsu is a pretty successful chain of healthy fast food, Asian-inspired healthy fast food. So I think the target market, probably office workers picking up their lunch and meals before getting home, sushi, Asian broths, that sort of thing. So the three point summary before we begin. First, it says on the cover, every recipe under 300 calories and under 30 minutes to make. Tell you more about that later. Uh, the second thing is, this is one of the books that we chose in a cookbook club that I used to run. So uh, I have a few recipes and pictures to share with you that I've included in the show notes. And finally, there are actually a number of sources, I would say, that are tasty and some interesting ideas that I hadn't tried before. So all of which just coming up <laughs> in the main part of this video. So. First of all, the every recipe under 300 calories and under 30 minutes to make. Ha! Huh. Under 30 minutes to make, I would say fairly accurate. Most of them are easy, they're accessible. Even if you're a beginner at cooking, you can manage a lot of this. Um, part of that reason is because it has a sauce plus dish concept. So what I mean by that, you, you make the, a number of sauces and you can keep these sauces in your fridge and you can dress whatever it is that you're making with these sauces. So it's a little bit like having a wardrobe with tops that you can mix and match with accessories and, and you throw them together to make you know, different outfits that are, are pleasant. I, I'm, by the way, I'm using this analogy in a... So I've read this somewhere that you can do this. My, my wardrobe is seriously minuscule. I, I clearly spend a lot more money on books than I do on my wardrobe. So, you know, take that analogy from someone who really has no idea about dressing up. Um, <laughs> the second thing is some of the interesting things that are, are less expected, especially if you're not... Um, vegan or you don't eat much tofu. Number one, tofu, especially in the UK, has a bad reputation for, for being awful. And I, I can kind of understand that because when I first came to the country, most of the tofu was available in health food shops and they tasted like, I don't know, blackboard chalk. So really, the texture, all kinds of wrong. Now you've got a, quite a variety of tofu that you can buy. And the, the one that's predominantly used, especially for the sauces in this book, um, is silken tofu. It's got a really nice smooth texture to it. And as it, it's still bland. And, but that, in a way, helps it. Because when you use it for a sauce, you can then add the flavor to it. And, and so there is a mock mayonnaise in here that is made from silken tofu. And I... I would say give it a go. Uh, people who, who don't like tofu had the, the sauce and, and they actually thought it was quite pleasant. It has a much lighter feel. So if you, again, if you don't like the, the gloopy heaviness of regular mayonnaise, this is a, a decent alternative. The, the big surprise um, that was, I thought, really pleasant and, and was a hit at the, the, at the cookbook club was the classic chocolate mousse. I like the fact that they call it classic. It's, it's far from classic. Um, it, it has mirin in it. That's not classic. Uh, but it's, it's lower in, in sugar. It, it uses, if you use some good quality uh, dark chocolate, it has some root ginger and, and the, the, the combination of the ginger and the chocolate with just some eggs, delicious. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed that one. It felt like a, a treat that wasn't going too far <laughs> into, into unhealthy zones. And, and without being so, you know, I, I, for me, having things like low-fat cheese, there's no point in that. I'd rather have a smaller piece of regular fat cheese because the texture is just all kinds of wrong. Whereas this, this is actually pretty, pretty good. All right. Um, what was my third point? Yes. 
the reminder that you can make a whole bunch of different things just by adding small touches. So for example, scrambled eggs, if you slice up or shred some bits of, of nori, which is a seaweed, uh, on the top, it gives it a different, different dimension to, to regular scrambled eggs and almost zero effort. You know, it takes a pair of scissors and, and a little bit of snipping <laughs> and, and you're done. So a couple of nice ideas like that in the, in the book. And that it, yeah, I think that's about it. All right, so in general, I would say a decent book. Um, it's not that exciting. By the way, if you like your food with a bit of kick and a bit of pungency, the recipes need a little bit of cranking up because this is clearly made for the untouched English palate. Um, so the, the, the dynamite broth was, was a little bit more like a sparkler rather than dynamite, you know? Um, and yeah, I, I think it even has not too spicy broccoli. Yeah, just just a lot of things that are, are tamed down a little bit. So it, 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 it's in some ways, for, for people who like pungent tastes, I would say this kind of airs on the side of, of boring and bland. But for, 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 for those of you who want some inspiration and you know, you can always crank up uh, the, the, the flavors a little bit, it's, it's not a bad base. And, and th that concept of sauce plus main dish is, is a nice one to, to reinforce. All right, so, so that's it for, for this book. Uh, join us next week for another cookbook talk. Till next week, cook well and eat well. See you later. Bye.